Here is Cleopatra sitting here at the Mina House, or Mena House as I refer to it. My eyes look like this from the Pharaonic Village. I don't know where to even begin except to say if you haven't come to Egypt yet, I don't think you know what you're missing. Don't worry about the food. Don't worry about security. There is absolutely great security. They sign you in and out of the hotels. You must tell them where you're going or your guide must tell them where you're going and then they sign you back in. So have no worries about security. The traffic in Cairo is horrendous. So just gird your loins and prepare for something that should only take 30 minutes to take possibly two hours. The only thing you have to be really stringent about is bottled water. Make sure you've got enough bottled water. You can eat the foods as long as you're in a clean tourist restaurant. There is so much to see in Cairo. A person could easily spend four or five days and not even touch the surface. If this is your first trip to Egypt, my suggestion based on four separate visits to Egypt over the years would be fly down to Luxor, give yourself one day just to acclimate, then at least three days in Luxor if you have the time to enjoy yourself, visit the souk, um, and, and, and just get the feel of Egypt and its ancient history. Then go out into the desert for two days for something completely different. Come back to Luxor, take your cruise from Luxor up to Aswan. Definitely fly to Abu Simbel. I don't know how anybody on the first trip to Egypt could even think of missing Abu Simbel. Then from there, fly up to Cairo and end in Cairo. Allow plenty of time for the Egyptian Museum. Do not race through it in an hour and a half. I find the museum and its history much more meaningful after you have seen all these important monuments because having seen them, you can really assimilate what the museum has. I think I would end in Cairo, allow at least three days in Cairo, minimum, do the best you can. I'm going to recommend Memphis Tours, our tour operator. They have been in business since the 1950s. They are competitive. They'll arrange anything you want. You don't have to do it as a group. You can put together your own tour. And FYI, they gave me no freebies, not even a free drink. I got no discounts. I'm recommending them because they are excellent. Absolutely excellent. You want to come to Egypt in either April, May, September, or October. It is not considered high tourist season then, and the weather is the best. December, January, February, and even into March is high tourist season, and it is darn cold. Make sure you bring a warm jacket. The weather changes constantly, and on this particular trip, it was really cold. If you haven't been to Egypt yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, especially right now. Jump on it. Prices are low and the sites are all still there. You'll have a wonderful time and you'll be safe. If you have been to Egypt before, come back again. We have seen so many different sites and there are still more. There is always something to see in Egypt. There is always something to enjoy. And I guarantee it, you will have a wonderful time. I don't know what is there not to like about Egypt. Come and visit, see for yourselves. Do you come. How many times in your life will you ever have a chance to see a site like that? Join the millions and millions of other people who have been fortunate enough to visit Egypt and stand awestruck as we have every single day at the site of these unbelievable pyramids.